Thank you for joining Why Wellness Network and we are going to talk about home health care because we all need to plan for our futures while we're young and plan for our families and that is a, a challenge sometimes. Absolutely. So we thank Absolutely. you for coming and we're going to um, Bayauda Health Home Care. Health home care. It's a, Big company here, and you offer a lot of services. Okay. Yep, Bayada, uh, it's called, actually called Bayada Home Healthcare, and okay. we used to be nurse finders up until about uh, two years ago, I believe, a little year, year and a half ago. And Bayada is an East Coast company, started back in 1975 by a gentleman by the name of Mark Bayada, and that's how we get the money. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. that's a great and name. so they started with just one a client with Mark providing the care himself and then he wanted, really wanted to expand his footprint and now there's over 250 offices uh, across the nation, one office in India and we're lucky enough to be part of that family here in Hawaii so it's really great we're helping people age uh, gracefully and um, dignified in their own homes and Amber Momoto here is our clinical manager and she goes out and meets with families and I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. That's very important. She's not really the quiet one. But. <laughs> uh, um, um, yes, I am the quiet one. And there's uh, several cl clinical managers. I'm just one of them. Uh, Tracy is uh, another clinical manager, and we work primarily with the with adults, um, uh, mainly assistive care. Uh, those are the types of people who may need. Um, you know, assist with bathing and dressing and meals and a little bit help with their activities of daily living. But we also have pediatrics and we have um, uh, nurses that work um, with children in the home. And um, uh, we're a pretty diverse office at the moment. Yeah. So, so it's nice that you're friendly and you have this big office because you're going into people's homes and this is a very personal you know, as assessment that you need to do to be able to help their family. And a lot of the parents, they have children. and. I think, I, think, um, I think friendly is good, but I think what a lot of people really look for when they're trying to find home care is they're trying to find um, people to, uh, to help them solve their problems. That, you know, we need help with mom, and one of the nurses come in and really sits down and talks with them and, and tells them, you know, some of the, you know, the positive things, and, and they'll say, I didn't know that, and you've been so helpful, and you've answered so many questions, so... Um, um, that's uh, that's I think you know whether I, I'm really funny or not, but, but I help being them. Being personable and, I and also them. listening well, to their family. I think the biggest thing that people want to know when they're letting a stranger into mm -hmm. their home for their mother or father or husband or wife is that they can trust that person mm -hmm. and they can trust the company that employs that person. Mm -hmm. So I think that the hard thing with home care is that a lot of times you're developing that relationship and that rapport with individuals over the phone. And that's our biggest challenge, right, is that once we get somebody over the phone who's in, inquiring about our services, we need to really make sure that we convey those concerns and that compassion verbally over the phone and they understand that we really have their best intentions in mind. Once Amber or Tracy goes in the home, it's usually they usually can see how professional mm -hmm. and how, you know, what how sincere we really are, but you know how it is hard to develop that kind of relationship so quickly over a phone when you're talking to somebody over the phone. And that's what we have to contend with with all of the other home care agencies is you have people calling, and they're not calling us, they're calling every other agency, and they want to have that connection with that person on the other line. And they want to know that they can trust that individual. And so it's not just about what we do, it's about hiring the right people that can convey that mm -hmm. message and really really have that rapport. So that's, uh, that lends us to talk about our, yeah, our, our screen, motto. Well, yeah, you know, that when, when they talk to people on the phone, they always tell them about um, uh, uh, we believe in compassion, excellence, and reliability. Mm -hmm. So we try to run the business uh, according to, that's Mark Bayada's words. And um, so when we hire people, when we look for people, when we deal with our clients, we always have those three words in mind. And, and I think it, it really, uh, we strive to do a, a better job um, so that they really feel those three words. So when somebody applies with you, mm -hmm. you, you check references, you mm -hmm. do criminal background checks, and they have to take the CPR. Fingerprinting so. and APS, CPS background checks. and. Uh, and they have to answer the right questions. It can't just be, I really like this business. 
I really like to work with somebody in the home. It's more than that. It's what really makes your heart sing. Is it this business or is it just making a dollar here and there? Because they can go somewhere else as far as we're concerned. But we want the people to work for us that really want to make a difference in somebody's mm -hmm. life. You know, right. They really find joy and satisfaction at the end of the day when they're able to help somebody do something as simple as get themselves to the bathroom and get a shower. You know, those kinds, those are the kinds of things that when we're young and we can do that independently, we take it so for granted. Mm -hmm. But when I broke my foot and I had to get in the shower by myself on a shower chair, I'm like, holy cow, you know, it's scary. And you, that's just one thing. You Now you're talking about a bunch of... What but you didn't call me to I did. help you with your shower. I did. I'm going to do it myself, which is basically <laughs> what seniors do. Right. By and gosh, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. I can do this. I've been doing it for 100 years or 80 years or whatever. And um, they, you know, it, we have to overcome those barriers that I don't want someone coming in my home. I don't. I can do it by myself. I don't need anybody in my space and um, and we are all going to get to the point at some point where we're going to need some help right you know mm -hmm. and so we just all need to start talking about it to our mothers and our fathers and our sons and our daughters we need to let them know what our wishes are um, whether we want to stay home or we don't mind going somewhere because that makes a difference when people are having to make those choices and mm -hmm. usually the children sometimes contact you Oh, no, yeah, a lot of times. The time. they see I mean, this is the the, we're talking to the baby boomers right, right. now that have parents in their 80s and the 70s, 50, right? 50, 40, and 50, they're 50. already, you know, they're like around my age, and so they're going, holy cow, you know, I'm going to be having to think about doing this in another 20 years, and I'm doing it for my parents now, you know? So we're looking at two generations of people that are really starting to think about this because it's the 20s and 30-year-olds are like, what? I don't care, I'm going to party, you know. It's the 50s and the 60s and the 70 years old, but there are so many of us that are really starting to think about those kinds of things and those choices in the next so many years. So mm -hmm. they see the changes in their parents and say, well, maybe, you know, they're forgetting things, memory's not quite there, or they're, the balance Or they're is burning off. the house down, leaving That's the stove on. I mean, yes. Memory, yes. Uh, memory issues, but at the same time, it's so funny though because that's also a challenge for home care, where they, you get that concerned daughter or son, and they're going, "I really need to have home care for my for my mom. Um, uh, I can't leave her alone." Of course, the mom thinks something completely different, and and so trying to explain to them, you know, uh, we ha you have to talk to your mom and let her uh, understand that. Uh, um, this is important for her yeah. because it doesn't usually go well when the, the, the child thinks mom or dad needs this help, but if they don't think they need it, then it's, it's, it doesn't and work out well. A lot of that is dementia they lock us out. <laughs> Do you know that billions of dollars are going to be spent in dementia-related mm -hmm. conditions and care for dementia-related individuals in the next so many years? It's just, you know, it's, it's crazy mm -hmm. how many people are out there that are living in some form or another with levels of dementia. And I just talked to a daughter yesterday on the mainland. Her mother lives by herself here. Uh, I don't need help. I can do this by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want anyone coming in the home. She had her uh, accepted into one of the assisted living facilities, a wonderful facility. I won't go. And now she's turning to us and you know, what, what can we do? She's not going to let us in the door. We can't force our way in the door. So there has to, that's why I say you have to have some discussion and you need to make some decisions. And I basically told the daughter, you might have to think about making a decision for her. And that's you a know, hard before, thing, especially yeah, when you don't is. live in the same town. No. And you you know, can't she wants to, to try to give her mom the, you know, the, the freedom to make her own decisions, but she realizes that it's, you know, her mom is not making logical decisions. You know, decisions. decisions so. that's right. However, we have in, in some instances, you know, they said, well, even if she won't let you in the door, can you just check to make sure she's alive? <laughs> so the, somebody would come and they knock house. on the door and, they, and the lady would go like, what? Go away. <laughs> and they go, hi, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. And they'll go, you let me check your refrigerator, make sure you have food. And every now and again, she'd let them in, but then it's like, okay, get out. <laughs> um, and so we actually have. I think a couple of clients that we do that for. 
um, and that's not quite what we had in mind, but the family takes comfort in knowing that she comes to the door, right. she seems clean and put together, and she She's seems eating. to be eating, <laughs> and, and or they'll take a real quick look in the house, is it, is it clean, does the trash need to go out, um, and, 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 but that's all that this particular lady likes. And it's us just that too. peace of mind. Yes. And, so and to know, know that. What, and they live on the yeah. mainland. So there's like, did you see her? Is she okay? Yep, she's good. She's fine. And, and, like, and okay, if good. they go in there and all of a sudden things have changed, that behavior has changed, then they'll know there's a problem. Right. Right. Know, right. So the question is, what kind of senior do you want to be? Yeah. Yes. 20 years, Lori. <laughs> I don't know, I, I might you need some be. dementia help pretty <laughs> soon. In another 30 years. I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Yet, I want to be a nice, kind, <laughs> funny senior. Well, I think you I don't want to be a grumpy senior. You're already a funny senior. <laughs> I think you, your, your, isn't it. it true your personality when you get older is the same as when you were younger? So if you were a little yeah, feisty. Yeah, because I asked that daughter, I said, so, you know, your mom is kind of ornery, you know, she's kind of she bullheaded, right? right? Yeah. And she goes, she's always she's been, been that yeah. way. Okay, so I'm like, oh, okay. So I think you know, you're going to be okay. I, you think I'm going to be okay? Yeah. You can sign that agreement. <laughs> okay. I don't know. So if someone's watching and saying, you know, I really want to maybe have this as a career in my future, what college degree do they need to get or experience and training to apply with your company, you know, if they're in college right now and they want to do this. Well, the, if, if this it's is interesting, if this is pulling at them emotionally, then you can have, you can go two different ways. You can go to, to become a home health aide or certified nurse's aide and you work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one case in a home Ooh. setting. And in that case, you can go and take a course at Kapilani Community College or there's lots of certified nursing schools on, on the island. Um, but then you could also go further beyond that, and you could become a, a, an LPN or an RN. And, um, and in that case, you know, there's lots of opportunities as well. Home setting is mostly home health aides, mm -hmm. but there's, uh, there's lots of opportunities for skilled nursing as well, you know, in more of an administrative supervisory capacity. And plus there are other um, opportunities for people who feel like they want to be helpful, um, uh, in the community, and uh, and there are clients that just need uh, companionship, mm -hmm. and so that's it, it, it's not skill driven, um, and people who have you know good common sense and they're kind and they're helpful and they can they can do really well in, it's almost in like that an capacity. Assistant, like go over there and maybe yeah. have prep meals and you know even sit shopping. there and read them the newspaper and yeah, or go yeah, out together and make sure you know they get on the right bus go to Chinatown and go to Chinatown yeah. and shop go and shop get bananas and papayas yeah. you know and then take them take them back on the bus and, and you know to, but you know what's interesting about companionship is that uh, some uh, individuals are attracted to that when they're a little like midlife. Um, they're uh, either they're not working or they their kids have left the home and that's what they do it's, It doesn't require a big skill, but they they feel like they're contributing and they get paid yeah, it's, so nice. that's it's not a volunteer job. and a, a lot of seniors job. like to have someone that might be a little bit closer to the age they so can relate a little you know commonality in in the discussions and stuff because sometimes a twenty year old might have a hard time identifying with an eighty year old unless they're an old soul themselves. Or they can't you take know. the ear thingies out of their head <laughs> yeah. But they can't stop texting or whatever. You know? Yeah, they can't get off their phone. But at Bayana, they're not supposed to talk on the phone, you know. Right. That's, that's policy. Yeah, so they have yeah. to get through your mm -hmm. training. Absolutely. Orientation. Mm -hmm. and, and every and single case that we have that a home health aide is providing services or a companion is supervised by a registered nurse. Or thank you. Her. And so she goes out and she just, you know, they, they watch them. And, you know, it's... It's an unusual industry because these individuals are working independently in someone's private residence. Mm -hmm. It's not like an office where you can come in and everyone's watching what you're doing and you're on the time clock and all of that. There's a lot of so a lot of trust involved. Yes, you know, and a there's lot a lot of, of things that can go wrong, I should say. Mm -hmm. We've seen many, many things that have always shocked, that shocked us. You know, not terrible things, but things like, why would she have done that, or you know, or what were they thinking? What were they thinking? But that's you know? a part of um, the process when we go in and uh, the RN goes in uh, to open the case, and um, that's our opportunity to talk with them. And I go through all of those things. It's like you know, um, even when you get to know this person, they're here in a professional capacity. Um, it is technically a stranger in your home. Um, um, how? Do, what do you do to protect yourself? Uh, you know, putting uh, 
important information away, not letting them have access to financial records or uh, your credit cards. Um, I mean, it's like if the plumber came over to your house, you wouldn't have your purse just sitting out on the counter with your wallet. Um, but you'd be surprised how many elderly people will all go into their homes and they'll have envelopes of money. I mean, a lot of money just sitting there. And, and, and you, you know, you advise them about, try to educate them about, you know, you're going to have people coming into your house. You, um, you need to be safe. Or put it away. But it, it's interesting how many don't. They're just like, whatever. And it's that's like, the benefit whatever. of hiring through a company that will certify if they, they hire someone off Craigslist. Well, There's right. no one to certify we're and licensed, do bad, yeah, and, bad and we're contracts. bonded and we're insured. And then you're also supervising these the work the workers that's right. that are going in yeah. there. So it's a little bit of peace of mind to not hire on your own. I mean that's there's a, there's a huge right. huge amount of private hire people out there that are making a living doing this. But the only word of caution I have for people that are thinking of hiring someone privately is understand that there's a risk. Always going right. to be a risk. And the risk is certainly greater when you're privately hiring someone because now you then become the employer. And if anything happens on your, you know, on, at your home, you become liable. Right. Whereas if you have a company that employs someone and they come and if something should happen, then it's on our dime. It's exactly. not on their dime. And you're going to be supervising and making right. sure things aren't happening. Absolutely. You'd be surprised what happens sometimes, so Lori. We could tell you yes, stories <laughs> where you just like you just want to you just. You just, oh, can't no. even, you just can't even believe it. Um, funny stories, though, too, and and I think it, it, it's kind of sad where you get the, the those the, the the little pockets of strangeness, but it's it's it involves people. So, on any time you have people, you're going to have weird things. I think the majority of people who work in home care are they're good, they're honest, they're hardworking, they're they're professional, they take their job very seriously, and they do a good job. Then you have others that I don't think they've got like a sex in their head, you know. Okay. So it's good that you're watching you know, them. And, and one lady brought her them. dog yeah. to work. Her bought her dog, and really? the uh, they were says an older worker, and the lady called us and she said she sleeps in my bed, and I was like, what? The lady she comes with her dog and they sleep in my bed. <laughs> uh, that's when we go what? Okay, oh, hey, this boy. might not be working. This is not yeah. working, but just and they're. Funny, bizarre or they take stories, their, they take the client to their house when there's a big party going on and the clients over there, you know, <laughs> having a party at, at the at the employee's house, you know, on shift. You know, we, we find unfortunately most of the time we find out about those things after the fact and you know, we you know, it takes steps more, to correct it. Well, and immediate and steps to correct thing, it. You know, if anyone tells you, you if you call anyone and they tell you, Oh no, we don't have people that do that, they are lying. Every, people are people. Eight, every people agency are people. has issues has like funny this. Stories every single like that. one of them does. Mm -hmm. But what happens a lot of times is some agencies won't act upon it. They'll just let that let loser it go. employee go on and on and on, continuing to provide substandard care because they're where they're afraid of losing the case, they're afraid of upsetting the client, when in fact that client is getting a disservice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I was really happy to know that that was one of Bayonet's things is they don't sit on those kind of things. When right. something happens, they act on it right away. Because That's I've right. worked for other companies where we've just, they just let it go, let it go, let it go. High standards. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Well, how does someone get in touch with you to kind of get a consultation on the phone and see what they, tell you what they oh, need? Oh, actually, they don't call me. Uh, but they can call <laughs> They five. can call the, the office of your staff. Five, uh, 808, 808, 591. Oh, 6050. <laughs> and um, you can talk to Ying Ying or, Ying Ying Allison, or Allison. And they are customer service managers and they are trained to take referrals and ask all the questions and try to help you out uh, uh, with as much information as they can on the phone. And uh, some and people you have are, a website too. Um, apparently, we do. www.bayata.com. <laughs> and if there's any senior groups, or church groups that would love a presentation. Right now I'm doing a presentation on laughter is the best medicine and it's absolutely hilarious. And I keep getting better and better the more I do it. And so I've done it at a bunch of senior centers. So I would you not can call the office. <laughs> I would like to po I would like to point out though that um, Bayada is spelled B A Y A D A because everybody always asks me when I go out and they go, How do you spell that? And then I have to say it about two or three times. I go, how do you spell that? So it's B-A-Y-A-D-A. 
-E and it's pronounced Bayada, not Bayada. Just think of Kaneohe Bay. Yeah. Bayada. That's how we, because we, we took us a while to get it. But yeah, we're, we are excited to be here in Hawaii to, to make a difference for hundreds and hundreds of families. And we're on all islands as well. Mm -hmm. And so a family from the mainland, if they have a senior here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we do. We have many right. that, um, that have called us from various places. Well, thanks mm -hmm. for joining us. And thank you're also you so in the White Lotus magazine. So. Okay, oh, yes, of course. Absolutely. Best magazine ever, you know that. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thanks for coming. Oh, Bye. You're Bye. Bye.